I'm going to share some tips for how to make white space on your calendar using two books written by Greg McEwen. The first one is Essentialism and the second one is Effortless. Essentialism, published in 2014, is a discipline for figuring out what is absolutely essential with the idea that you would then eliminate everything that is not. And this would then allow us to make the highest contribution possible towards the things that matter. Effortless is published in 2021, and it follows along the idea of essentialism, except that it actually goes into how to work smarter and not harder. I probably don't need to go into so much detail about how everyone is busy these days. Technology has made us all accessible at any time at almost any place on earth. We seem to all be finding our calendars very full. So full that at times we probably all just want to throw the calendar out. But what if instead of throwing our calendar out, we figured out how to make our schedule work better for us. White space is blocking out time in your calendar for the sole purpose of relaxing, recharging, and refueling. It is literally marking a space on your calendar just like you normally would for appointments and meetings and projects that you're working on, and you actually would block out space on your calendar for nothing more than relaxing and recharging. Please note that this does not include binging on Netflix. Essentialism is a four-part book. The essence of an essentialist is the first part. The second is exploring the vital. Third is eliminating the trivial. And fourth is executing the changes. Note that while I will not be going through all the details of this book and all the different parts of it, I have pulled out from each of these sections important pieces that I think will help guide us to being able to carve out precious white space on our schedule in order to help us to rejuvenate and re-energize ourselves. With that, I've chosen six steps to help guide us on this journey with the first one being create space in order to explore. While you could take this to mean physical space, in this instance, I'm suggesting that it is mental space, that as we get more and more busy, we need to carve out quiet, thinking, calm time even more. It really seems to go against what makes sense. You would think the busier you are, the more you have to do, do, do. But actually, the reverse is true. In Essentialism, we read that the faster and busier things get, the more we need to build quiet reflection spaces in our schedule in which we can truly focus. The next tip that I pulled out of Essentialism is that play sparks creativity. We encourage imagination and play in our kids, but somewhere along the line, we have bought into the lie that adults don't need to play. Now, play does not look the same for me as an adult as it did for when I was a kid, but I am realizing more and more the importance of play in my life, whether it's reading or drawing or hiking. And from that play, The output is my creativity is increased. The next tip from essentialism is that intent needs to be concrete and inspirational. And in this instance, I'm using the word intent synonymous with goals. I know a lot of people are reticent to use the word resolution. Goals also add in some pressure and the hustle. And so I think the languaging that people are getting more and more comfortable with is having an intent but the concept is very similar to a goal. So here, we need to make sure that our goal of making white space is very concrete and that we are passionate about finding that space in our lives and keeping it in the long term. The third tip is the crux of the book Essentialism. Say yes to what matters. And this is the hardest step, I think. This means that you have to be comfortable with saying no to people who ask you to do things. You have to be comfortable with going back to people that you have already said yes to and saying, hey, I've actually overcommitted myself or I need to reprioritize. And it means even getting to the place where you are saying no to people or going back and saying, 
I've had to change my mind on this. You've got to spend the time, take some of your white space to sit down and say, what is really important to me in my life? What is important to my family? So that you know with assurance when opportunities come up that yes, this is something that fits into what is important to you and saying yes jives with that or no, it doesn't really fit at this time. Step five is eliminate distractions. This means that in your white space, you are not scrolling on your phone. You are not watching the latest Prime video. And it may also mean that you're not even doing something quiet like reading or journaling or drawing. For your white space, you may just be sitting and thinking, staring off into the distance while sitting on a park bench or looking out over the city from a balcony. Because distractions can mean a lot of things and only you can figure out what they are. As a planner, I love this step. Design a routine. It will be much easier for you to keep your white space on your calendar if you keep it routinized. Just like that weekly staff meeting that you know what time it is and you don't even hardly have to think about it. Or the same time that you start for homeschool every morning or when you know you've got to hop in the car and go pick up your kids from school. The more we design a routine around something, the more prone we are to complete it and to be successful at it. Our goal in determining what is essential in our lives and what it would look like to carve out white space on our calendars is to get to the place where we enjoy the moment that we are in. So at this point, hopefully you're thinking, yeah, this all sounds good to me, but how? How do I actually do this? I am busy. I am committed to things. These are things that are important, that are part of my vision or important to my kids or my family or my husband. I don't know how to get from here to there. When I found out that Greg McEwen wrote a second book, I was really excited. I think this is where the rubber meets the road. So Effortless is a three-part book where he talks about first the effortless state, then action, and then results. And again, I am not pulling out every single point in his effortless book, but simply those that I think really will help us get on the track of carving out white space in our schedules. The first tip I wanted to highlight is to pair essential activities with the most enjoyable ones. A lot of planners call this habit stacking. So by taking habits and stacking them together with tasks that you already do, you're more prone to actually do them and not forget them. So one of my favorite things to pair together is cleaning, which is essential, albeit not my most chosen activity, but I pair it with listening to a really great audiobook. One of my favorite memories of this is deep cleaning my kitchen one year. I listened to Chitty Chitty Bang Bang on audio, and now Every time I go to deep clean my kitchen, I remember Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and go back to that time. And it has created this special memory. The next tip is to turn the mundane into the meaningful. This is actually very difficult to do and it's almost kind of a mind game. So one of the examples that I like for this is if you are making bread, and you're kneading that bread. One thing that I like to do is to think about the people that I am making that bread for. If it's my family or neighbors or it's going to be a gift, I spend my time kneading and praying about them and thinking about how special they are. And so I have taken something that's kind of mundane and turned it into a meaningful experience. The next tip is to bring laughter and fun into your days. Again, this is very easy if everything is light and happy and fine, but in moments when things aren't going well is when you really have to dig deep and laugh about it. One of the things that we like to say to each other as a family is, don't smile, don't laugh, 
when someone is grumpy. And inevitably, for the most part, it makes someone at least crack a smile. We've got to acknowledge the hard parts and really say, this is hard. I'm angry about this. I'm sad about this. And then we've got to bring the lightness and the fun into the situation. Another tip that he suggests is releasing emotional burdens that you don't need to carry. This, again, sounds really easy, but it is something that is so hard and we have got to do that interior work for figuring out why are we so busy? Why have we filled up our schedule so much? Why is it so hard to find time where we can just sit and think and be creative and feed back into ourselves? And sometimes that in our work takes therapy, to be honest. But ultimately, sometimes we are carrying emotional burdens that manifest themselves in a very busy schedule that we don't actually need to carry. The next tip has so much scientific data behind it proving that this works, but being thankful allows us to, again, be able to focus on what is actually important. So many people talk about a health scare or a safety issue that all of a sudden their life comes into clear focus and they realize, man, all this other stuff is not actually that important. And I think if we can, on a small, bite-sized way, be grateful for things, it helps us to more and more and more narrow that funnel into, is this actually really important or is this just something that I'm doing because I think I should. Rest is something that I have only come to appreciate as I've gotten into my 40s. When I was in my 20s and 30s, man, I could do so much. And now that I'm in my 40s, I'm realizing how important rest is, not just for your physical body, but for your mental capacity as well. And I'm not even talking about sleep here. I'm talking about resting And the importance of rest in my life is why I have become so passionate about finding white space in my schedule because I'm realizing so many benefits that I'm gaining in rest. Practicing the power of presence is really the culmination of all of this. When we are not so busy that we're just running from one thing to another, we are able to stop and look our kids in the eyes. We are able to stop and hug our spouse or significant other. We're able to remember, oh, wow, I haven't talked to this family member in a while, and I really am feeling like I need to reach out. And we're able to grab a hold of those inklings and those moments and be in them and not constantly be looking to what's coming up, coming up, coming up. So for our common intent here of putting white space in on our calendars, our action is to break this goal down into bite-sized manageable steps. It may sound impossible to carve out white space in your day as you look at your schedule right now. And so I would encourage you to come up with something that is bite-sized and manageable. It could be five minutes a day where you literally set an alarm for five minutes and sit in as much of a quiet setting as you can. If you take public transportation, you could set your timer on your phone, not scroll it, not read, not talk, but literally sit and look out the window for five minutes in just quiet or close your eyes and just be within yourself and your thoughts and think. If that sounds too difficult, Choose an hour on a Saturday evening that you're like, I'm just going to go and take a bubble bath, take a book, light a candle, tell your family, hey, I have an appointment between seven and eight o'clock. Write it down on your planner, in your calendar, on your family wall calendar, wherever it needs to be written down and follow through on that appointment with yourself. This is the most important step in being able to find this white space for yourself. Lastly, the two tips that I pulled out of Effortless in that ending results section is to automate as much as possible and to use checklists and not rely on your memory. So automating your tasks is something that you have to figure out, but I know for me, I have grocery apps where I have a record of these are the things that I will normally buy, and then when I go through, I'm not trying to remember what is it that I need to buy 
I can just go to that list, click them, and the grocery store app will tell me where it is in the grocery store and if it's in stock. And for my business, I have certain activities that I batch together and certain activities that I will just pull from a bank of information so that I don't have to recreate it every time. And using checklists really has changed the way that I manage work and home. So for instance, I talked earlier about deep cleaning the kitchen. I have a schedule for the year where I know each month, these are the places that I'm deep cleaning. We do regular cleaning all year long, but there are certain places that I do deep cleaning on a schedule. And I am able to go to that binder, look up when I'm supposed to do it, and I don't have to remember I hope that this has given you encouragement and strategies for how you too can find white space in your calendar. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time.